Please take a look at the end of your Materials of Music PowerPoint. At the very end, I have a collection of slides that names different vocal ranges and different instruments that fall into different families of instruments. On your first test, I will ask you to name a certain number, and I have all of those numbers for you at the end of the PowerPoint. So for instance, let's start now with vocal ranges. Under vocal ranges, you have two male vocal ranges and two female vocal ranges. Now these are generic. I'm using typical things here. For the man, you have the high guy who is a tenor, the low guy is a bass, and the middle guy is called a baritone. Most guys are baritones. When I was in high school, I was in the choir and I could hit the lowest note of any of the guys in the ensemble, so I was singing bass. And then when I went on to undergrad, I started to train as a baritone. But as I was aging, my voice tended to keep getting a little bit higher. And so by the time I reached graduate school, they believed that I was not a baritone, but I was actually a tenor. The male vocal range does not mature until we reach around 29 or age 30. And so I was uh, right at the age of 30 when I finally felt that my voice was not moving any longer, not changing. But for the ladies, their voices mature at 18, 19, and 20. So about 10 years before. And so their voices are much more stable. The reason for that being um, the change that guys go through in their um, early teenage years. So uh, the ladies, the high lady is the soprano, the low lady is the contralto, we've dropped the prefix for that and we simply just call her an alto today. And then the middle lady, if you have ever been in a choral ensemble before and you sang soprano two or alto one, you might be referred to as a mezzo-soprano or a medium soprano. Now, if we were in the opera world, if we were in the musical theater world, then we might learn more about the soprano voice category. There's a lot of different types of sopranos out there, and also tenors and basses and so on and so forth. But uh, for our purposes here in, in music appreciation, these are the ones that we hear a lot about. So I would like for you to name two male vocal ranges and two female vocal ranges. Now we go on to the families of instruments. What family of instruments is present in a symphony orchestra but not in a concert band? Well, the answer to that is the string family. So I would like for you to be able to name three string instruments. Uh, the string instruments include violin, the viola, the double bass, the cello. Cello is the most misoften spelled word on the test. It's pronounced like it needs uh, a C-H beginning, but being derived from the Italian, uh, it's just C-E-L-L-O as you see on the screen. Harp, guitar, banjo. I have pictured here uh, four ladies who comprise a string quartet. A string quartet consists of two violins, a viola, and a cello. So let me ask you this question, a critical thinking question this morning. If we have two violins in the string quartet, and I say to you that a violin is a great melody instrument, having two, which texture of music that um, needs more than one melody would the string quartet be able to achieve? Well, the answer to that is polyphony. Remember our definition, um, at least two lines of melody with harmony. So each violin could carry a melody by themselves. The viola and the cello can provide harmony for that. The other families of instruments include the brass and the woodwinds. I would like for you to name three instruments that fall under each of those categories. Brass instruments include the trumpet, the trombone, the tuba, French horn, baritone. Woodwinds, you have the clarinet, the saxophone, the flute, the piccolo, the oboe. Uh, one of the common mistakes made here is the saxophone. Saxophone does have a brass body, but its mouthpiece includes a wooden reed. 
And so it gets the cl uh, clarification of being a woodwind instrument because of that. I would like for you to name four percussion instruments, but I would like for you to name two percussion instruments that actually play pitches. And I would like for you to name two that are non-pitched percussion instruments. So the pitched percussion instruments actually are going to produce frequencies. And these would include the xylophone, the marimba, the glockenspiel, I'll let you simply call that the bells, as you see on your slide, and the timpani. If you ever noticed the timpani? The timpani have this white covering and there's cranks along the top for the percussionist to tighten or loosen the covering, therefore changing the frequency that's produced. The other uh, percussion instruments that you see on the slide, the snare drum, the bass drum, the triangle, all of these are more for rhythm and for power in the orchestra, but they're not producing an actual individual pitch as you go along. So please name four percussion instruments in all, two that are pitched and two that are unpitched. And then that brings us to our final family. Other music appreciation professors might include these within the string family or the percussion family, but just to lessen everybody's confusion, I'm calling this the keyboard family. Now up to this point, you have your choice of which two or which three you would like to name, but for the keyboard family, I will only accept piano and organ on the test. If you've ever looked at the guts of an upright piano or a grand piano, then you know it has all of these strings within the instrument. So you could call it a string instrument, but in order for those strings to vibrate and create the sounds, then you have to depress the keys and that causes this felt covered hammer to strike the string, which is a very percussive action. So some people refer to this as a percussion instrument. So just to, again, lessen everybody's confusion, we'll call it the keyboard family. So please tell me piano and organ. So this is going to be worth 19 points on your first test, almost a fifth you can count on being on your first test. So this concludes everything with our Materials of Music PowerPoint. When we start next with our next lecture, we'll be going into our historical discussions for the class, and we'll be beginning with the medieval period.